She is the first woman to be named athletic director at Washington State University. With the combined NCAA, you know, current day uh, department, it's really an honor. I'm, I'm uh, thrilled. I mean, I think where we're at in college athletics, it's, you know, probably an understatement to say by, you know, if I were to say it's, you know, the, the largest amount of changes we've ever seen, like that would hardly even begin to cover it and realignment and all of the flux of conferences. And it just feels like, you know, we're just very much still at the beginning end of all of this. Hello, I'm Enrique Cerna, WSU Regent, and welcome to a conversation with Ann McCoy, WSU Athletic Director. She was appointed to the post in late March on an interim basis, then on June 25th was named full-time athletic director by WSU President Kirk Schultz. She is the first woman to become an athletic director at Washington State University. I would have to think that, that that's, that's very meaningful to you. It is. No, I appreciate you having me first. Thank you so much. Um, and it is. It's it's very meaningful. I think, you know, at Washington State, we've had a long history of a lot of really, you know, powerful, fabulous women in and around the athletic department and certainly over the women's athletic department when it was, you know, split and under PE. But to be the first one really, you know, with the combined NCAA, you know, current day uh, department, it's really an honor. I'm, I'm uh, thrilled. Yeah, well, you're heading up WSU, and uh, the what's left of the Pac-12 is now headed up also by a woman. Th- that's excellent. Let's talk about you uh, at WSU. I mean, you're no stranger there. You've been there for a long time. So uh, talk about your history there. Yes, um, I came. I started January 1 of 2001, so it's been a little over 23 years since we first uh, moved our family to Pullman and became part of the Washington State University community. Um you know, and really came in initially in an associate athletic director role to work with a lot of our internal operations and uh, budget and a lot of different things um, with uh, Jim Sterk, a gentleman I had worked with before and, you know, really think highly of he and his family. And just, uh, you know, he described Washington State and what a great place it was. And we had an our daughter was 18 months old at the time. And he said, gosh, it'd be a great place for you guys you know, to be with a young family. And uh, and we were sold. We came to visit Pullman. And in, in my time here, you know, I've been really fortunate to be able to work with literally every sport at this point and most every administrative unit and be involved in a lot of areas. Uh, and I've really just been, you know, uh, happy to help out or to work where is needed um, with the different athletic directors we've had. Um, I worked with you know, three different athletic directors on a full-time permanent basis while I was um, here. And, you know, yeah, it's been really a great and special ride along the way. And I, I'm, you know, I don't know that I would have ever imagined 23 years ago sitting here today as the athletic director um, with all that has changed. And I, I, but I couldn't imagine anywhere else I'd rather be. You really have done just about every job there. So, I mean, you really know the place completely. Let's go back about, um, Tell me where you're from originally, how you, where you went to college, how you got into this sports management area. Sure. Uh, so originally from central Wisconsin, so born and raised in central Wisconsin, primarily in the Stevens Point area, um, and then went to school out east, went to the University of Massachusetts, and quite honestly, fell into sport management um, as a potential major and career a little by accident, you know, as freshmen tend to do as a first year student. I was looking for three credits of elective my spring semester of my freshman year. And I thought, oh, there's this great government regulation and sport class they had just started. And it sounded interesting. And some, you know, friends I'd made in the dorms were going to also be taking it. And we thought, oh, this will be great. And it was so fascinating. I loved it. I was immediately hooked. I switched my major for my sophomore year and never looked back um, and, and really enjoyed it. And really found college athletics as a niche within sport management um, through a required internship. You know, as part of the sport management program at the University of Massachusetts, you had to do an internship. I should say you got to do an internship. And you, uh, mine was at the University of Connecticut, and it was in their athletic business office. And I quickly fell in love with college athletics. You know, so many folks either went into pro sports or maybe facility management or a lot of different areas. But the college athletic bug really bit me, um, and primarily as a chance to work with a variety of sports uh, versus just one, you know, if you're at a pro uh, a pro organization, but also uh, the chance to be part of, you know, a, a student athlete or a student's life when they come in as a freshman and you get to see them grow or they come in as a transfer, 
but it just it's just a great place. A college campus is a great place to be. Um, and so I, you know, started the resume job market and was hired at the University of Maine for my first job out of college um, under Jim Sturt. So, so that's where uh, I first met. And uh, what were you doing in that first job? So I was, yeah, I was the assistant athletic business manager. And so I worked in the business office, which kind of was a good, um, you know, extension of my internship. And, you know, through, you know, just sheer attrition of some other staff within a year, I was the senior woman administrator there and had a lot of other responsibilities. So I was extremely fortunate to benefit kind of from, you know, circumstances of people leaving and, you know, hopefully doing a good job and getting opportunities to continue growing professionally, uh, but then continued, you know, to kind of work with other administrative units with sports um, and really just uh, continued to grow administratively um, and kind of continued on that path, you know, at a couple other stops across the country before getting to Washington State. So did you play sports? Growing up? I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> In fact, you know, my mother would tell you that PE and math were my two worst subjects, probably. So, of course, I started in, you know, athletics finance, because that makes all the sense, right? But it, um, I played softball some growing up and uh, swam, uh, but nothing uh, passed or through high school. So really just more of a recreational summer. Um, I've always loved sports, but I was not a former athlete, no. So were you attracted by watching sports or was it just the behind the scenes of what it, because let's face it, I think most people, when you talk about athletics, they think about playing the game or right. whatever the sport is, you know, competing and things like that. But with what you do, and probably a lot of people don't understand the fact that there is a lot of um, business acumen you need in sports management uh, that you would apply to any business whatsoever. So that's behind the scenes. No, it's very true. I mean, the degree was very much um, business driven. And I think my background in college athletics has been more, you know, business wide. But what really attracted me was to take something people love, which is athletics or sports, if you're, you know, so inclined to love it, but to use that as a way to really enhance and help young people grow and to become, you know, uh, you know, their post college adult adultness, you know what I mean? And just right. really use that as a way not only to bring a community together, but I think just college athletics is so amazing because of the spirit and the passion people share, you know, whether they're, you know, with the same university or rival universities, I just think it's such a great way to use a lot of life skills, uh, you know, that benefit people well past college and in something that people truly love, you know, so it's a really good way to kind of uh, be part of all of that. But but to your point, exactly as a as a as a big business. Did you have aspirations of becoming athletic director? Oh, it's interesting. You know, I've been asked that question a lot over the years, um, a lot of times by maybe students that would interview me for a class or our, you know, staff that may be thinking about what they want to do. And people would always say, like, do you aspire to be an athletic director someday? And my answer was always, you know, that I, I, I aspire always to love the job I'm in and to love what I do and to feel like I can make a difference and continue to grow. And I was really careful about not getting caught up ever on, you know, I've got to be an athletic director someday, because I think, you know, a lot of times people get to that goal and it wasn't what they were expecting. And then they missed so much along the way that might have really, um, you know, influenced their thinking on their goals. So I would say I never ruled out wanting to be an athletic director, but I wasn't, you know, obsessed with the fact that I must be. And it had to be you know, to be honest, somewhere that I felt really good about. And there was never an athletic director job anywhere in the country that I felt was better than my deputy AD job I had at Washington State with all of the involvement I was in. And then, you know, I would say when Jim Sterk left or when Bill Moose left, it was not in my mindset, you know, boy, I want to be the next athletic director at Washington State. Now, when Pat left, very different. Like that was, I would say, truly the moment where I felt like the timing is now right. Like, I feel like this is the right next step for Washington State and for me. Um, if the stars align, you know, with everybody's, you know, wishes and 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 priorities. So I, you know, I never ruled out being an athletic director. I, But I wouldn't have imagined being one anywhere else but here. But to be honest, not even in my mindset here until Pat left. I was in Boston at a conference when I got the news that Pat Chung was going to leave Washington State University. Of course, it was uh, quite a gut punch, I think, for many of us that knew Pat and also 
that uh, a part of Coug Nation. Um, but you step, you were asked to step in and take it over as an, on an interim basis. At that point, did you know that you wanted to go for the full time job? I did, 100%. Um, it was, you know, when I heard that morning that Pat was leaving, uh, you know, it was interesting. You know, people talk about just these moments of clarity. And when I heard he was leaving, I was like, I want to be the next athletic director here. And so when President Schultz called about being the interim, that was one of the few questions I asked him is if I am the interim, can I also be a candidate? Because I don't, I want to do whatever I can to help. But if being the interim will take me out of being a candidate, then I need to think about that a little more, you know, relative to, you know, the dilemma of wanting to help the institution through the transition period, but still wanting to be a candidate. So I was relieved when he said, no, that you, you know, you would be able to be a candidate if you were the interim. Um, so, so yeah, at that moment, I, I literally like with a moment of clarity, it was, that was it. Were you shocked about Pat's leaving? Uh, I think I was more shocked about the destination, honestly. Yeah. I, you know, sure. it was, yeah. yeah. And so I, you know, I know that, um, you know, Pat did so many great things while he was at Washington State. And I know, you know, that there, you know, was there were a lot of rumors swirling about whether he would be staying or leaving. And so, you know, I don't know if necessary the fact that he ultimately took a job other than Washington State. You know, I think that for he and his family, we knew that might be a possibility at some point in the not so distant, you know, future. But I, I, I have to admit, the destination took me by surprise. So. Yeah, well, you weren't the only one. I <laughs> think many of us were surprised by all of that. So you, you, you then start the interim interim role, and it's not like you ease into this thing because Kyle Smith had just left to go to Stanford. Um, you have a basketball coach opening. Uh, we're still dealing with uh, what's happening uh, with the implosion of the Pac-12, budgeting, all of that. So talk about uh, trial by fire here because you just have to go into this thing and there's a lot that needs to be done. Um, was it an advantage for you to, to know, already know what was going on there and what needed to be done? I think it really was. I mean, I think having that basis of knowledge and honestly, just the relationships with our staff and our coaches, uh, but also the Pac-12 and, you know, certainly, you know, with campus leadership, system leadership, um, you know, the Board of Regents, everybody. I think the fact that we at least all knew each other was good so that we could have a lot of really good, quick conversations about, you know, what direction here? What about this? What about priorities? You know, like, we could hit the ground running because I was already, you know, a, a, gr a group of people when we knew Kyle was leaving, you know, we had already kind of mobilized before we knew Pat was leaving. And so I do think that that was really helpful, if nothing else, um, you know, to be able to hit the ground running. Uh, and in some cases, although I wouldn't necessarily wish all of those pieces of uncertainty on anybody starting an interim position, you know, it also left no doubt as to what immediately needed to be done. I mean, the to-do list was made by itself, basically, because all of those things needed to be addressed in pretty quick order. Um, and so I, I think it was. I think it was helpful uh, to be able to kind of just hit the ground running on all of those. Did you feel a sense of energy and, you know, OK, you, you have to address what's happening here, but also uh, just knowing that you had just a short amount of time to get these things done? Or did you uh, feel at, at any point like, whoa, this is overwhelming? Right. I think, you know, I'm a big like, wow, this is a lot. And then just kind of sit and compartmentalize things, you know, and just decide, OK, what what's today? What's this afternoon? What's tonight? What can be two days from now? That helped, I think, just be able to go, OK, this, this isn't all going to get done in one day. So just really prioritizing that helped things not feel, you know, quite as, uh, you know, I think, overwhelming or just like a, a lot. Um, but it also, it was energizing, I think, because in some ways, and our staff and I talked about this, uh, or we all talked about, it, it was almost like the very natural changing of the chapter, so to speak, with everything we'd been through this last year. So it was almost like a defining moment between Kyle leaving, Pat leaving, all of these different pieces coming to kind of a head it was a very natural place for us to just go, OK, like this is the breaking point of where we turn the page and really have the, 
you know, the the permission almost to start fresh and know it's okay. And so I think that was energizing, that part of it, because it felt like we could just, you know, get moving and get some things done. Well, and also you, you had to prove yourself for that yeah. full-time job. So that that was interesting in handling all of that. Had you ever hired a coach before? Yes. Um, I, that's one thing I've been extensively involved in throughout my career. Um, and honestly, at Washington State, part of, you know, in some way, shape or form, every head coach is hire, um, whether it be for actual interviews, whether it be positions that, you know, I was in charge of hiring because they were a sport maybe I worked closely with or contracts. Um, but yes, I had hired coaches before and had been involved with every one of our current head coaches at WSU in some way, shape or form. All right, so let's talk about uh, the state of athletics uh, at the college level these days. It's crazy. Because I think so many people are, are just kind of blown away by um, the change, the realignments, the money, and how that has played, it is playing such a big role in college athletics today. Amateurism is kind of, you know, where is it? It's kind of gone. Not kind of, it is, I think. Right. No, I mean, I think where we're at in college athletics, it's, you know, probably an understatement to say by, you know, if I were to say it's, you know, the, the largest amount of changes we've ever seen, like that would hardly even begin to cover it. I mean, we're having a hard time even, how do you best describe it and everything that's happening? And I, I feel like we're really just still at the beginning of all of this. You know, so much has changed, so much is in flux still, you know, being finalized through the legal system or with the NCAA, et cetera that I, I feel like it, it really is. It's unprecedented. And the number of things that are, are um, hugely impactful, you know, as you mentioned, whether we're paying student athletes, whether we're sharing revenue, whether we're, you know, the portal is a whole different, you know, ball of wax. And yeah. I, th I think we're all figuring out kind of how to best get our arms around it, but also in a way that can still make college athletics a really unique and great thing, you know, because I think it would be a shame if we lost all of the positives college athletics has to offer. Um, and it seems like there's got to be a way to kind of marry that with really maximizing student athlete benefits, you know, and things that they're able to, you know, maximize from their time in college. And so it it is, it's not only with all of the changes that could occur with the financial pieces of it, but just, you know, as you mentioned, the realignment and all of the flux of conferences. And it just feels like you know, we're just very much still at the beginning end of all of this. Well, talk a bit about NIL and Portal, and what are your biggest concerns about that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we're fully supportive of student-athletes being able to to monetize, you know, them them themselves, their name, image, likeness, or, you know, their maximize their benefits, and all of those things are, I think, can be extremely positive. I think partially what we're looking at is just evaluating with the recent change in the state of Washington on June 6th, and being more involved with um, NIL and really being able to work with the Cougar Collective differently than we could in the past and and really explore ways that Washington State can can make that something that's right for us and what that looks like. You know, I think so, some of the challenge is going to be just what's philosophically our take as a university and as an athletic department on on where we want to be in some of those spaces. What is the relationship with the Cougar Collective and the university? Because I think it was arm's length here for, you know, until recently. So how has that changed? I, I think it's been really positive. Uh, you know, that you're right that there was a bit of an arm's length because of a lot of the state laws related to, you know, state employees and ethics and some of our ability to be involved. And then I think just really looking at you know, we have some of our donors who love the idea of the NIL, some of our donors who really, you know, don't want to get involved in the NIL space, but finding a way that we could really be partners in in maximizing the, um, what do I want to say, uh, you know, really matching up those desires and wishes that people have. And so I think it's really positive. I think we've been able to, you know, partner with them and work with them. And I've had a chance to meet some of those folks and also some some of our supporters who are really heavily involved and and uh, passionate about the Cougar Collective. And so I think it's in a much it's in a much better place because we're able to be, you know, involved in a different way. And I think that was it was hard before because it was all good intentions. But with some, you know, we weren't on a level playing field in the state of Washington. Right based on what other schools could do. So I think all of those changes will be really helpful as we continue to grow that partnership or that relationship. 
If I was a coach these days, I think that the, one of the things that I found would find most frustrating is that it's not just about coaching the game. Now it's almost like you have to be an agent. And yeah. uh, there's a beyond recruiting, it's also the other parts of it with NIL. And then you have to deal with the portal, which is, uh, that's got to be extremely frustrating. So what kind of guardrails do we need? And can we have those guardrails? Because I think it would depend on Congress to do some of this stuff, and we know how that's working or not. Right. I mean, I, that's an interesting question because I think you're right. A lot of reasons, you know, coaches got into what they do is really, you know, to to educate, to teach, to, you know, make student athletes the best versions of themselves kind of on and off the playing surface of, you know, choice, but in the classroom and as, as you know, humans. And so I think that what what our coaches, I think, are trying to do is really balance all of that is still to, to do all the reasons, you know, the things that got them into college athletics and that they love about being a coach, but adapting to, to all of these other parameters. And the, the portal is such a you know, it's an interesting um, beast because, you know, in some cases, certainly we benefit by student athletes, you know, coming out of the portal and coming to WSU. And in other cases, we lose student athletes that we would love to keep. And I think anytime, you know, you can empower a student athlete to be where they want to be, it's probably, you know, a, a good thing. You know, a, a, a non-athlete student is able to do that if they want. Um, but how you do that with continuing to keep up you know, progress towards their degree and other reasons they're at college, not just for their sport. You know, I think those are the guardrails that that I continue to be kind of focused on or that are important is that, you know, at the end of the day, we often find that people go in the portal, either don't land anywhere else or the grass wasn't greener. You know, there were some the good, the bad, and the ugly you knew about your current school. You didn't know that and you kind of had to take a leap of faith. And so I think you know, anything that provides even more advisement to student athletes to make really good decisions for themselves, um, you know, would be helpful, you know. But again, that's hard because then it's really limiting their ability to, you know, be where they want to be. So it's a, it is a dilemma. Should there be some type of, I guess, again, it would have to be a guardrail, well, more than a guardrail, really, but it, it would almost be a requirement that a, an athlete come into, if they accept a scholarship, that they... Uh, stay there at least a couple of years uh, rather than this one year and done and hopping to someplace else. Would you like to see something like that or what would you like to see? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's so hard because it's, you know, I always would want to look at it as, you know, everything else was fine, but the student athlete just wanted to be somewhere else. And I feel like the problem is, is that, you know, often it is not fine wherever they are. And so the thought that someone was trapped you know, somewhere that was not a good situation for whatever reason, um, or, you know, they needed to be closer to home due to a family situation or, you know, whatever the situation might be. It's just hard to think of how you could put in guardrails to prevent people from, you know, going in the portal and transferring when emotions were running high versus giving somebody the exit they need, you know, for their well-being if the situation is not a good fit. Um, so I, you know, ideally, you know, we've, some schools look at Alston and other benefits as cumulative, like they student athletes don't get them each year. They have to be there and they get them upon graduation. Or I think there are some ways schools have tried to kind of put some guardrails of their own in place, maybe. But I'm, you know, I I would love to see more stability because I think it really erodes what college athletics is. But in my mind, I just don't quite know how that looks yet. I don't think anybody really knows. Again, it's kind of the fluidity of the whole process right now. Uh, let's talk about uh, the paying of athletes. Today, there was the settlement uh, by the NCAA with House, the House versus NCAA. Um, so uh, can you explain that settlement and, and what it means to WSU? I, you know, uh, the, the long form details of that settlement are still unknown. And so I think we have a couple weeks yet before we'll know even more details about it. I mean, again, I think we're supportive of student athletes being able to, you know, kind of maximize their opportunities. But I think at some point when you talk about, you know, revenue sharing or other pieces um, that may be part of some of these settlements, I think it becomes something philosophically as an institution we need to discuss as one possible avenue we could spend our resources, but also the scholarship opportunities. You know, it could end up, you know, allowing more scholarship opportunities as they look at kind of roster slash scholarship, 
you know, uh, mirroring, for lack of a better word. So I think so much of that is unknown yet to weigh in on Washington State. Um, but ultimately, once we have more of the details, then I think it's really sitting down, you know, on, as a department and then as a as an institution and deciding where are we going to be in that space. Yeah, because it will affect us money wise and budget wise, and for sure. So let's talk about budget. Uh, the university has had to make cuts. And I think, you know, there's always this conflict between uh, with faculty and academia versus athletics. Um, how, uh, talk about the athletic department, the cuts that you've had to make, where we are with that. We know that there's a huge budget deficit yet. Uh, where are we? Yeah, I mean, I think right now we're in a really good place of kind of stabilizing things for fiscal year 25, which just would have started uh, yesterday. And so I feel like, you know, we had to make a lot of tough cuts, as you mentioned. I mean, to get our budget uh, down to $74 million, which is the amount of revenue that we as an athletic department, you know, could show we could generate, um, our budget needs to match that. And so, you know, we did uh, go through, I think what a lot of people, I think, misunderstand is that we receive state funding or all of this, you know, support that ends up impacting the campus. But in fact, our our revenue sources come from donations, conference distribution, ticket sales. I mean, things that are very specific to intercollegiate athletics. And so, you know, when those revenue sources went down, our budget needed to go down. And so, uh, you know, we did eliminate some positions. We did, uh, you know, decrease people's budgets. And I feel like we're in a really good place for FY25. Um, you know, our, you know, as we've just closed out the books for fiscal year 24, I think we're going to land in, you know, where we projected, if not slightly better, knock on wood, as things are still getting, um, you know, finalized. But really, our goal going forward is to to balance our budget every year to be good, you know, financial stewards of our resources, you know, for the greater good of the campus and the system and. You know, but then we really need to look at how we're going to continue maximizing our funding and fundraising. You know, at some point, you know, as we've talked about the expenses or the opportunities of things that as an athletic department we could be investing in only continue to go up. And so where we're going to be in that space to continue, you know, competing on a level playing field, I think there we're going to have to have kind of philosophical discussions on you know, where all of that comes from and what the future is, you know, for a conference realignment or alignment uh, for fundraising, fundraising priorities, kind of all of those sorts of things. So that's very much on my mind right now as we kind of are transitioning to the next fiscal year. And Again, really good for this year. Really good yeah. for this year, I think. So the television uh, situation that we have, um, we're going with what the CW, which as I understand, one of the, the selling points on that may not be money, you know, as far as uh, what we might have been getting before from uh, as part of the Pac-12 and the bigger, uh, you know, uh, rights deal that you might, might have there, but really viewer are really exposure around the country. So talk about that. What does that mean to us? And what's the positive about this? Yeah, I mean, I think the partnership with the CW and Fox Sports is going to be amazingly valuable for us from an exposure standpoint. You know, as we go through this transition, with the, you know, the changes with the Pac-12 and, you know, putting ourselves in the best possible position as Washington State University, you know, athletics going forward relative to conference affiliation, that exposure and keeping our Washington State brand out there was extremely important to us. And really to to be able to be in every home literally in the country through that agreement was far more valuable to us. Um, and, and really, as we talk about even with budget decisions we made and really keeping the student athlete experience at the forefront of our mindset, you know, being able to to showcase our, you know, there are in this case the football games, you know, with our fans, with our fans um, and their our student athletes and their families, and just really to keep that out there was extremely important. I mean, we want people to be able to turn on their TV and see the Kooks. Yeah, and you know, we tend to do pretty well when it comes to viewership and ratings, uh, and, and a lot of that depends on how, how well the teams compete. But uh, we tend to have a, a good showing. We do. And and to be honest, that's, you know, a good, you know, two second plug for me to say. And right now that has never been more important. I mean, it is going to be evaluated how what our viewership looks like, what our attendance looks like. I mean, all of those sorts of things that we can show interest and eyes on 
the Washington State Athletics program right now. Like we need every bit of it to really keep, you know, uh, to keep Washington State well positioned in these conversations. And so it's never been more important, in my opinion, to tune in, to come to the games, um, you know, certainly to invest in the programs. Uh, It's really important right now. Well, let's talk about that because, okay, we were, we're in this kind of two year window now. We win the court case. You know, yes, we lost the Apple Cup, but we beat them uh, in court. Uh, and now we have this um, two year period uh, of transition with kind of a pack two. As, but it seems like this coming year is going to be extremely important with the showing and, uh, and then people. You know, coming to Poland yet to watch a game because it has been tough to get people to, you know, to come. And with the changes and who we're playing and all of that, uh, how do we get folks to turn out? I've heard a lot of people say, well, we're waiting. We're waiting to see or we were waiting. And I'm like, we, I don't know what we're waiting for. That's this- what I want to know. What are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah. Is that to your point, this year is going to be so important relative to probably by, you know, this time next year at the very latest. You know, I think we hope to have more things solidified relative to our long term future home for Washington State University Athletics. And whether that's a rebuilt Pac-12 or a partnership with a different conference, like it's going to be extremely important to put us, Washington State, in the best possible position of being an institution, you know, that that is relevant, that people care about, that 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 is adds value you know, to whatever that conference relationship looks like. I mean, that's how we do that. That's how we show that. And so I would hope that, you know, whether we're playing, a, you know, what people think of as a typical conference opponent or a different typical conference opponent, at the end of the day, people would find value coming to see Washington State play because we're going to be at every game. You know, the opponents may switch week yeah. to week, but the, the Cougs are there at every game. And I just think it's so important um, and I, I think a lot of times the, the part of the dilemma is for people is over time, we always say, oh, we need fans and we need people. And, you know, so I think sometimes people wonder, well, why is this any different? I, I just don't know that we've ever had as many different eyes tuned to what we're doing as we, the way we are right now. And so, yeah, because we are in this really fluid situation. Yeah. So this is the time where you want, you know, Coug Nation to really step up and go to games you know, and and show, you know, that they have support for all the teams. Yeah. You know what? And I feel like right now, like we need each other, like at the end of the day, yeah. like, and, you know, as I've said to even, you know, uh, our folks in the building, like it, it's been a long year that it feels kind of good to just take a deep breath and, you know, remember why everything is great about what we do and about where we're at. And I feel like even for our fans, like, there's, there's nothing wrong with just maybe wanting to get together and have what feels like a typical football weekend and to be, you know, wherever, to be in the RV lot, to be in the stadium, to be, you know, just together. Uh, because I think at the end of the day, like what we're, we're all feeling a lot of this, but I think if we got together and could feel some of the really good positive things that always has made being a kook special, like I, I think to be honest, that would be, that would be kind of nice right now too. So, you know, Part of the role of your job is not just to be an administrator, but to be an ambassador, cheerleader. And that is that your personality? I mean, do you because you have to get out there, you have to get in, bring the message to the folks as we're having this conversation right now to tell them why it's important and explain that. You know, I think it is. I think over time, you know, how that role has manifested itself with my you know, position has been different. Yeah. But but I am very much that person for something that I'm passionate about. You know, I'm not just a, you know, get out there to get out there, but on everything Washington State related and everything we're talking about, 100%, because it's something I feel so passionately about and, you know, that I and I want to share that and I want to be an ambassador for that. And I yeah, so I would say very much so. Yeah. Even though the role previously has maybe been more behind the scenes, I would think if you talked with people in our department, you know, they would see, they would have seen that part of me, but it's been more internal than external, but it's there for sure. Let's talk about one thing that is, uh, I think we often hear about, and I think this is the case of all universities across the country, where you have athletics and you have the academic side, and there seems to be, you know, this kind of conflict, friction over that. How do you convince people that athletics is important? And what role it plays in in really the 
in a university. I mean, I really think of ourselves, you know, as a uh, as educators. I mean, we happen to do it through athletic competition in a lot of ways. But I think about as a department, I mean, we we bring in and spend $12 million in student scholarships, I mean, as a department. So we're bringing and investing in people coming, whether it be first-gen students, whether it be students that, you know, might never have thought of Washington State University, uh, never thought college was possible uh, from whatever, you know, background or environment they come from. And I just feel like, you know, we really have a similar mission to the faculty. I just think for whatever reason, things have gotten a little sideways and, you know, we need to do a better part of, you know, whether it be, you know, ambassadors of our resources or really helping, you know, be better partners on campus. I think when, you know, so much has happened over the last few years, it's kind of, you know, maybe natural to go into kind of, you know, um, hunker down mode or, you know, that to feel like there's a moat around the, you know, athletic complex. And I think that's just not who we are. I mean, we very much want to be a part of the campus through the piece we you know, provide that's unique. And that is, you know, again, very similar mission of educating young people and, you know, helping with life skills and being the best you can be. It's just, we do it from kind of an athletic lens, but as part of the bigger university mission. And I think for whatever reason where that's gotten maybe a little sideways or lost, you know, that's, you know, a big piece of, I think what, you know, we all want to be part of the solution with too, is just, you know, and maybe some, misinformation too about, you know, on both parts, to be honest. So I just being better partners, better ambassadors, to your point, but also just remember, you know, that we're all here in the business of educating, you know, students. And it's just, you know, I think we we share a lot of that. Do you feel a need to, I guess, explain the value to faculty too? Because I think, you know, you there's that friction over that, okay, do we really need sports? And, you know, is it is it really worth it? And they, there is, tends to be, I think, some that feel that, okay, sports gets uh, a pass when it comes to budgeting. I, You know, I would say, uh, you know, not being able to speak to anything to, you know, in the past, I think, you know, the, the budgeting piece is something, the financial piece is something that is really important to me and serious. I mean, that was what I first did when I came to Washington State. And although not directly involved in it more recently, um, it's it's... It is a piece of, of our credibility, I think, as a department and just being good stewards of our resources. But I also think, you know, we want to be seen as a department that adds value to Washington State University. And whether that be through helping, you know, get the word out about, you know, the academic mission or the university as a whole, or if we can be used as a mechanism for that, you know, athletics often gets talked about as, you know, the front door or the, you know, the window to or whatever it might be. But at the end of the day, I feel like we're just, you know, we want to be seen as good partners that maybe have a little different audience that we should be able to, you know, leverage to help support the overall university. Because we are, you know, we are just one part of the university, but we want to be seen as a part of the university. Let's talk about your family and the fact that you're a, you, you're the mom of an athlete. So tell us about that. Yeah, I have. I'm really fortunate. Um, we're blessed to have two really talented children um, in athletics, and and they're good. They're great students too. But they, um, our daughter was a student athlete for Washington State, so she went through the recruiting process in kind of 2016, and then came to Washington State as a freshman, and swam on the um, the swim team, and left with uh, two school records to her name, and a lot of academic honors, a lot of athletic honors. And uh, ended up actually getting a master's degree as well with her extra COVID year. So she competed for five years for WSU. So she's in a proud alum with a bachelor's and a master's degree. Um, and then our son is a rising senior at Pullman High School, also a phenomenal swimmer. Uh, just finished up competing at the Olympic trials uh, for the U.S. in Indianapolis. Wow. Uh, yeah, very exciting. Very cool. Yeah. Um, our daughter went in 2016 and 2021 to Olympic trials, and then yep. now her little brother gets his chance in, uh, you know, 2024. Uh, but yeah, so he's gone through the recruiting process, and and to see how much things have changed just even in their times going through all of this uh, has been amazing, just night and day. Uh, but yeah, he's committed to um, compete at the University of Tennessee since 
We don't sponsor men's swimming at Washington State, so I couldn't put on the hardcore press <laughs> here. But uh, but yeah, super proud of them. Um, they've worked really hard. But it also has given me really, I think, good insight as to just all of the challenges of being a student athlete and trying to do both at a high level. Yeah, it's it's a challenge because your time and you've got to really make sure that uh, you stay in shape, but also be committed to going to school and all those other things. So where did they get the swimming gene? Where did that come from? You or your husband? I have no idea. <laughs> and my husband and I both swam some growing up, but not to any degree that level. So I I thought at first Jake, our son, started swimming just because he was sick of sitting at the swim meets watching. But, <laughs> but he loves it. I mean, he absolutely loves it. And uh, I don't know. They just, they're both little water bugs. And and then what, what kind of a uh, parent are you when you go to watch a competition? You know, I'm I'm pretty mild mannered, but like uh, probably nervous energy inside. But I tend to be more like you know, it's all good, it's all gonna be fine. <laughs> um, um, I cheer, but but I found like it's there's sometimes I don't get nervous at all, and then other times it's like oh my gosh, like it's I, I don't know, but I know they're gonna do the best they can do, and you know, just I just want them to be happy and enjoy themselves at the end of the day. So right. it, I'm pretty good. I'm. Uh, Definitely uh, excited, but more probably more introverted, just nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to wrap things up here with uh, just some uh, quick fire questions for you. So um, favorite food? Ooh, favorite food. I pasta. I'm a pasta girl. Okay. Uh, favorite music? Oh, um, I honestly like all music. I'm pretty more, um, kind of more like Latin pop music. Probably. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Oh, hey, I like that. Very yes. good. Yeah. yeah. That'd be my what favorite. A... <laughs> my Spotify list. So. All right. Okay. Anybody in particular that you like? Everybody. Everything. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. yeah. What is, does it make you dance or what is it? <laughs> <laughs> My kids would be more mortified if I answered that honestly. Uh, but maybe, yes. All right. Okay. Um, favorite sport? Oh, I that's that's going to get me into trouble. I can't pick one, right? But I, I, it'd be hard for me not to say swimming with my children. But I, I honestly love I, every sport we have at Washington State. I do sincerely love. The one sport we don't have that I do also love would be ice hockey. I've really? been, oh, okay. Right? Well, Wisconsin, you're from Wisconsin. Exactly. Yeah, there, exactly. You know. yeah. Exactly. So the swimming's hard because it's near and dear to my heart, but I do legitimately love going to all the sports we have here and hockey be the one. Which yeah. Is my heart, so. so Jake Dickert is from Wisconsin too. Yeah. You guys know each other. I mean, very close where the... We, we don't, but it's my dad still lives there. So as I've asked him, there are some, we have some mutual acquaintances and friends. Um, okay. But probably more inner intertwinings with the Bennetts in that era of Oh time. yeah, yeah. Tony and, yeah. Bennett and his dad. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um do you have a favorite pro sports team? Mm, I don't. Oh, I don't. Wow. Is that because you're so busy with the Cougs all the time? Yeah. It <laughs> it I can't even I'm trying to think, but I, you know, I every every pro sport in the state of Washington, right? So, okay. That's good. Um Favorite movie? Um, so I should give you a, I should give you like a really good sports movie probably as my favorite movie. Not necessarily, but I mean, you know, my if my family were watching, they wouldn't, they would know I wasn't being a hundred percent if I didn't say Moonstruck. Moonstruck is my favorite movie. Oh yeah, yeah, I like that. No, I love it. Yeah, of very the, good movie. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun movie to watch. It is it's very it's much. Been very a fair amount of time in New York City, so just the whole New York City vibe. I love. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite color? Green. No. Really? <laughs> no. And all the way. Okay. Good, good good recovery there on all of that. No. All right, Ed. It's uh, all crazy. So, okay. Last thing here is as you go forward in this job, and obviously uh, it is changing it all just constantly. And uh, there's so much to, to have to deal with. But what's your message to Cougs out there about our athletics and the coming year? And um, I guess your pitch to them to support the teams and to support to support athletics and the school. You know, I would just simplify it as honestly, it's going to be a great year for the Cougs and people don't want to miss it. 
All right. Well, I am okay. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk to me. And uh, we'll talk again in the future to see how we're going here at WSU. All right. Sounds great. I appreciate it. Go. All right. Go Cougs. <laughs>